together now from our hymn book, CGS hymn number 416 to begin with, hymn number 416. You're welcome to the house of the Lord on this lovely last Sunday of the month of May. We thank God for what he has done for us throughout the course of this month. We want to praise him that he's the one that started the month with us and is the one that is making us to see the end of it. And in faith, we're looking for what should lead Terry for the month of June by the grace of God. You are welcome, and we pray that the Lord will bless each and every one of you for coming. 
what may perhaps be at some other places on a type of day like this, um, bank holiday weekend. But we have chosen to be in the house of the Lord, and I know that the Lord is aware that you are here, just as he is aware that I'm here. And before we got here, he got here before us, yes. and he's going to bless us abundantly. Yeah. 416, we come now, our Heavenly Father, with thy children weak and faint, fill us with thy Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray that the Lord would do just that for us today. Amen. Let's take the three verses sitting down. 416.
Gracious Father, we want to thank you again this morning. Thank you, dear Lord God, for that provision that you have made for us. Come unto me, all ye that labor and that are heavily laden. Um, Lord God, you have promised us rest at your bosom. And so we have come again this morning, distressed, perplexed, um, pressed down. And Lord God, we have all our issues, problems, and challenges. But Lord God, we know that at your feet we shall find refuge. We have come this morning, O God, as we table all our trials, our difficulties, our troubles before you, we are asking, O God, that you help us. Because we know that in your presence is the fullness of joy. And we know that there remaineth a rest unto the people of God. Lord God, count us worthy of that rest. Father in heaven, all the troubles of this world, as they come, we know that when they come as a flood, your spirit will lift up a standard against him. But God, we want to have complete victory because we know the problems will come again and again and again and again. But Lord, we just want that eternal rest where you will welcome us back home and say, welcome home, son. Welcome home, daughter. And dear Lord God, there we will rest with you forevermore. We are praying, dear Lord God, that you count us worthy of that rest. We came from you, O oh Lord, and we want to go back to you. Lord God, please help us to make it to heaven. This morning, oh God, this bright and wonderful day, reawaken our hearts again, creating us a thirst and a longing for righteousness. Fill us, oh Lord God. Speak through the minister this morning. God, anoint him with your spirit. Anoint him with your oil. Dear Lord God, let him speak your mind. Let the word meet our needs, oh God. Heal the sick today. Oh Lord, encourage the discouraged ones. Save all, all those that are yet to be saved, oh Lord. And we pray that you will sanctify. Fill us with your Holy Ghost. And send us back home with joy and rejoicing. Thank you for answer prayers, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our Bible reading will be taken from the writings to the Romans, chapter number 11, reading from verse 5 to 12. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it is, it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Seven. What then? Israel had not obtained that which he seeked for, but the election had obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Eight. According as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, ears that they should not hear, unto this day. Nine. And David said, Let the table be a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Eleven, ten. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back away. Eleven. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Amen. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. Amen. For to provoke them to jealousy. Twelve and the last. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Blessed Savior, thou wilt guide us. Till we reach that blissful shore Where the angels wait to join us In thy praise forevermore 
Life is like a mountain railroad with an engineer that's brave. We must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. <clears throat> Watch the curves, the fields, the tunnels. Never falter, never quail. Keep your hand upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rail. You will roll up grades of trials. You will cross the bridge of strife. See that Christ is your conductor Amen. on the lightning train of life. Always mindful of obstructions. Do your duty, never fail. Keep your hand upon the throttle and your eye upon the rail. Blessed Savior, thou wilt guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in thy praise forevermore. <clears throat> you will often find obstructions, look for storms of wind and rain on a field or curve, or trestle, they will almost ditch your train. Put your trust alone in Jesus. Never falter, never fail. Keep your eyes upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rail. As you roll, Across the trestle, spanning Jordan's swelling tide, you will behold the Union Depot into which your train will glide. There you'll meet the superintendent, God the Father, God the Son. With the heart he joyous plaudit, saying, Weary pilgrim, welcome home. Blessed Savior, thou wilt guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait. To join us in thy praise forevermore. Amen. 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 I want to start the devotional service sermon this af afternoon by going to the text we read in Romans and um, just a, a few verses. Now, um, Romans chapter 11, verse 11. I'm going to start reading from 11. 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. 12. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. 
13, for I speak to you Gentiles. That's all of you. That's including me. We've got black Gentiles, Chinese Gentiles. Whoever is not a Jew is a Gentile. We all fit into this picture. Say, for I speak to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. 14, if by any means I may provoke to emulation. Emulation there means jealousy. Paul is trying to provoke to jealousy. Then... That are my flesh. You know Paul was a Jew. And he's trying his best. To provoke the Jews. Provoke them. To jealousy. It's a deep saying here. He says here. If, if by any means I may provoke to emulation. Them which are of my flesh. And might save some of them. 4, 15, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving, sorry, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Let's stop there. Today, God will have us consider a quite unusual topic in the, in the next few minutes, very short time, but... Whoa, may God help me. Amen. God will have us to consider a very unusual topic. I thank God for um, the exposure God gives us to read sermons, listen to all sorts. I've been, I've been praying. I've, I thank God for the, the, the sermon preached by Thomas Dexter. I thank God for the words of, of the apostles. I thank God for the apostolic faith. Everything to make us who we are. The title of this sermon is Positive Provocation. And I, it's, it's our prayer this morning that may we not be comfortable. Amen? Amen. Amen. May God positively provoke you this morning. Amen. And I know it's hard when you hear the word provoke. It doesn't really have a positive connotation to it. Are you with me? Yeah. But God, but God is a master strategist. Yeah. God has a master stroke. If God is going to make a master stroke on anything in this world, he has foreseen the end from the beginning. Yeah. What a master planner. The architect of this world. Everything is under his control. Yes. He has designed everything to fit in accordance to his perfect plan. Right. And he will work his sovereign will with, with people or without people. Right. With your cooperation, without your cooperation. Right. God can work in spite of you, right. with you. Right. If you decide not to, so will it be. But it is my prayer that may God allow you to fit in. Amen. Amen. May you fit in. Amen. Whatever God is going to do, or whatever God is going to do from now to the end of time, may we all fit Amen. in. Amen. It's, a big, it's, it's a big prayer. What we don't want to be is a misfit. Yeah. Yeah. When God is counting his people, may he find you there. Amen. When God is numbering his people, may he find you Amen. there. I want to be there. I, I want to see this choir. I don't want this choir to just sing here and then sing here and not be able to sing over there. I, I want to see everyone here. Amen. But in order for that to happen, God has come to ruffle the waters this morning. You see, God is love. Yes. Oh, the way God loves, we can't explain it. See, on this side of the earth, we will have a picture, a small insight into what it means to experience love. But God is love. He chose Israel. God took Israel like a lover takes a wife. God loved Israel. He loved Israel. 
We don't know why. But that country, those people, he just loved them. Yeah. Was it by works? I don't think so. No, no. Was it by... The, you see, just, just pray. You know, you know the way to pray. Just say, God, favor me. Amen. Because whoever Amen. God favors, yeah. ha! Yeah. If two people were in a belly, they have not been born, no. Come and listen to the almighty God. Two boys in a belly, they have not stepped on planet earth. They are still in between heaven and earth. And God says, I love this one. This one I hate. It's a mystery. We can't unravel that here. When you get to heaven, may you make it. Then you can go and ask, God... Why did you like this Jacob? Because Jacob was dodgy. He was. Jacob was a trickster, a con artist of the highest level. And yet, he was not even born when God said, I love him. May you have a good heart. Amen. May God give you a good heart. Amen. Some of you are unsaved, but you have a good heart. I'm telling you. Some of you are unsaved, but your heart is good. And God is just waiting for that minute, that hour, that he will provoke you. And when he provokes you, he will bring out potentials and possibilities that those of us who somehow count ourselves as being something, we will have to stand back and watch. One of them is brought to him here. He's told us his testimony. He got saved and people still did not believe he was saved. Because as far as grace was concerned, some people had written him off. Because sometimes we look at things from a myopic point of view. Myopic means that we don't see the big picture. But God sees the big picture. He is after you. Just know it. If you didn't know today, know it that God is after you. He loved Israel so much. Oh, but Israel left God like a jilted lover. Israel broke God's heart. God did everything for Israel. I mean, what do you want? What what do you want for a people? A chosen people. God did everything for this country. These people, God set them above every other nation. Gave them specific laws. You do this. You do look at the lesson this morning. You do this. You do that, I will put the fear and the tremble and the terror of people that before you arrive, they they, 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 they are shaking. Look, look, when you go, one of you will chase a thousand, two of you, ten thousand. Spiritual mathematics there, you can't understand it. I say, may God favor you. May God favor you. May the blessing of God rest upon you. It is so essential in this sinful world that you have the drop of Jesus' blood on your head on a daily basis. Favor must follow you or you will toil to death and you won't see anything to make you fulfilled or happy all the days of your life. You will be living a a frustrated life. And even if you're you're not careful as a Christian, if you don't go for everything God has for you, this is the danger point. You will be on the same level as somebody who didn't know God at all because that's what happened to Israel. Israel was God's chosen love, chosen betrothed. Go and read the Song of Solomon. Everything God spoke about Israel, it's in that book. People may misunderstand it, but it was the love of God to a people. May you not let God down. Don't let God down. God expects so much from you. What he has done, his investments, some of you, Even when you were in your mother's belly, you were eating the word. The breasts you sucked were breasts of saved souls. You better thank God for that. Some people are sucking nicotine today. They have 
have already been affected. Their future is already messed up. They are in places. Oh, God, you are blessed. Amen. You can't, God, God looked at all the parents here and decided, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this one. I'll give you that one. People who want to serve God, you don't see that as a privilege? Check your life. You know we don't get a choice. We don't. We, we, we don't get to choose who our parents will be. But God so blessed some of us and gave us the choicest of people, people whose heart were hungering and chasing after God. And God knew that for your life to be good, I'm gonna put you in the right environment from the start. But you see the problem. Sometimes in life, we overlook. When familiarity becomes too, you know, you underrate your privileges. Mm. Ah, Sunday school. You think Sunday school is cheap? Mm. Hey, this church is blessed. Amen. Go and go. I advise you, go to the apostolicfaith.org. Go to library. Go to curriculum. Hey, go and see what has been listed there. Resources for your eternal destination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of yeah. them is our Sunday school outline. They have worked for the children, two to five, mm -hmm. six to eight, mm -hmm. nine to 12. Mm -hmm. They've catered for everyone. The curriculum is like a university yeah. that which starts from yeah. two till yeah. when you die, you yeah. will never be hungry. Yeah. You will never starve. If you are eating trash, you are suffering in the midst of plenty. I can't understand why some people who have been in this church don't even know the history of the church, don't even know the doctrines of the church, don't even know the power in this church. All oh, this was happening to Israel. God pumped in, ah, he was looking for ROI, return on investment, but he didn't get it. Oh my God, he put so much. If God, if God wanted to show his power, he just, he, just, he, just needed, he just needed a man to stand in the gap. Just one man. That's how God deals. He don't need all of us here. He just needs one man or one woman who is panting after God and he begins to display his power through that person. Have you not seen it? He, he just needs one hungry person here and God will use you as a mantelpiece to showcase his glory. Yeah. That's what he did to Abraham. Yeah. Abraham, from, from, the, from the deadness of what you call serious idolatry. Mm. One man stands tall among many. Yeah. Some leaving all that behind. I'm chasing after you, God. Mm. I don't even know where you're taking me to, yeah. but wherever you go, I will go. Yeah. It happened to Ruth. No plans for the future, mm -hmm. no husband to marry, mm -hmm. but she identified yes. the God Amen. of this woman Amen. who was, who, oh, may Amen. you catch the vision. Amen. May you catch the vision. Amen. Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Yeah. Once he caught it, that was it. His life will never remain the same. Yeah. His life will be a bundle of testimonies. May your own be too. Amen. May your own be too. Amen. So what does God, God do with his lover? His lover messes him up. Stiff-necked, disobedient, break God's heart, break his rules, break, oh. And then God, up to the time of Jesus, God's heart is like, e -e 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 enough. Okay. What can I do to steer these people? Because, I don't know, let me ask you a question. Have you ever loved anyone? True, truly. Do you know, that's why you young guys, you young people, I want you to be careful who you give your heart to. Yeah, right. at, at this stage of your life. Be careful who you get emotionally attached to. Be careful who you give your heart to. You need regulations. I, I, don't, I don't mind, you know, in creativity, People talk of abstract art where they splash things and splash all over the place. I like that. 
But where you don't have regulations to what is, what is art, what, is, what, what will be accepted, then anybody can come and splash something and say it's, it's this. You still need some parameters to guide you. Yeah. That is why people will still pay to go and watch or, or view the masters who painted masterpieces in the Louvre in Paris, in the National Gallery at London, and so many places. They will go to see works that were done by masters who studied under masters. It wasn't something you just conjured overnight. Yeah. What we are trying to say here is this. God has you in mind. Don't break his heart. When Israel did, God decided, okay, it's enough. All right, you rejected me. All right, you're going to see. I'm going to open the door to a people who were not a people. People who didn't have Israel's privileges. You and me, who we are in stark idolatry, God said, I'm going to open the door. And Israelites, I'm going to provoke you to jealousy to say, see. Yeah. See what you could have happened. Do you, know how much, do you know how much God has worked with the Gentiles? Do you know how far this gospel is spreading? Yeah. Do you know how many people have given their lives to God and the word and the gospel and everything? Hey, you... The Jews, are a few of them are, are, gave their lives. That's the remnant. But a time will come. Their time will come. You know, grace always has to deal with space. Yeah. This space will soon close. Yeah. Yeah. You have the opportunity now. This space of grace will close. But now that it is still open, Amen. may we make the best of Amen. it. Amen. Amen. Amen? May we make the best of it. Amen. You see why? God, God wants to provoke you this morning. He provoked. He tried. He blocked them. You look, look at what God did. He's, he, he blocked their eyes. Oh, may God not block your eyes. When you, you know, you, sometimes you can mess up with God so much that he can give you to a reprobate mind. That you will be listening to sermons. It doesn't make sense to you again. And, you are, and you, 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 you are saying, no, you didn't wear your trousers on top of your head. You came in here, but the word of God doesn't enter your head again. You, 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 you've got to the stage whereby you, you, you've listened to so many sermons, no effect. Look at what God said in, in Romans chapter 11. He says that in verse 8, according as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber. Does God give that? Does God give that? May you not receive that. Amen. It says here, he had eyes that they should not see. The word of God. People will be blessed around you. You can't understand. You can't even see your deplorable state to make a decision for God. You're just coming the same way, same way, same way. Ah, may the spirit of same way, may it depart from you. Oh my day, may God open your eyes. He says here, eyes that should not see and ears that they should not hear. Unto this day. God can do it all. With no, no, it doesn't even need your permission. Be careful. Look, the one prayer you want to pray is this. God, as the word of God comes, God, break my heart. Break my soul. Because you know what? God has a way of dealing with human beings that we don't understand. Let me tell you, for, pro, for, for, for positive provocation to work in your life, because it will work. Amen. It happens in, in day-to-day life. Okay, let me divide from spirituality a bit. I came to this country in 1999. I had a HND in, in, in fine art, painting. I majored in painting. I never knew that HND in this country was like a one-year course. I didn't understand. I suffered in Yaba College of Technology. We, 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 they called it Yaba College of Tension. They gave us assignments. They trained us to be the best artists in the world. And then they, they said, Banji, we are sending you away to London to go and shine for us. And I come to London. What? I take my folio. These are the works that I've been doing. No, thank you. These are the works I've been doing. Sorry. These are the works I've been doing. 
rejected. These are the works that, ah, were they lying to us in, in Nigeria? Ah, okay, it's not, it's not true. God, faith, let faith work for me. Ah, I can't believe this. God forbid. Hey, I pray, 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 pray. Fast, 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 fast. Took my folio. The stress, the stress caught me one day. The whole portfolio I bought, I forgot it on the bus. When I got down for the bus, where is the portfolio? Hey, I ran after the bus. This is London. <laughs> Up till today, I can't find that portfolio. All the thing I toil for. Toil, 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 toil. No more. Ah, I cried that day. Hey, I tell my sister, but you say London is good. She said, if I say it's bad, you won't believe me. <laughs> you will say your own will be different. I came with faith, big faith. Ah, oh, massive faith. And then I became depressed. This very talent God gave me, I couldn't draw. I will come home, I will come, because I, I, eventually you have to get a job in London, some sort of job. You just have to get a job or you are finished. The people you are living with, they will tell you, oh, it's enough. Now the bills are going. You have to do something. Whether it is cleaning, whatever, you find something. At least something to keep you busy. So the one that fell to me, first of all, was kitchen pottering. And I wash pot, wash pot, wash pot, wash pot. After I would draw, my hand would be shaking. We won't see the sun. When I leave that one, I'll go and do dinner man. Dinner man, hello, how are you? Do, you, am I, do I look like your dinner man? When they see me outside, be careful. <laughs> all, this, all this was happening. I was depressed. When God wants to move you towards him, he will provoke you. He will provoke you. This is not negative provocation. There were negative provocations. This is God. He can use anybody to provoke you. Don't be annoyed. God wants to do three things. He wants to inform you, inspire you, and then impart something that will never leave you for life. That's the power, the power, the principles of provocation. The power, you can call it divine provocation, spiritual provocation, positive provocation, but it's not negative because it's not devil inspired. If the devil knows something will come out of it, he will not allow you to be annoyed. But God knows how to, he knows how to provoke you. He will provoke you. He will, you will feel uncomfortable. Oh my days, you will feel, and God likes uncomfortable. As far as it will lead you to him, Make your life better. Yeah. Take you to the next level. Amen. God will not stop. Oh, yeah. So he needs to expose you. So what happened? After spending from 1999 to 2003, I was depressed. Then I went to Nigeria. When I went to Nigeria, I was shocked. All my mates I went to the same school as. These are people that when it came to grading, that they, I was better than them. This, this, no, I'm not boasting. These were the top artists in the country. And God used them to provoke me. Just like God was trying to use the Gentiles to provoke Israel. Because God believes the power in provocation. You know how powerful provocation is? When the devil decided to provoke David, he could not resist but number the people. May you not be provoked negatively. Amen. When the devil decided to provoke Amen. Moses, Moses was shaken. He, he opened his lips unadvisedly and lost Canaan. I mean, earthly Canaan, which he worked for. Now, listen to this. Because God knows the power of emotions, he knows it. He will use that same negativity, convert it, you know, convert the energy in the negativity, convert it to positive energy and move you to act. When I went to Nigeria, I said, no way. It's, you know how Nigeria said, it's a lie. Hey? This one, here, yeah? that one, there, yeah? ah, no, I'm coming back. Everything must change. 2003, I came back. I said, I must exhibit in this country. No money, no nothing. I said, something must happen. I said, I must go back to school again. Some of you need to go back to school again. Start all over. Don't give up. God is provoking you. Let me tell you, when God wants to provoke you, he can use anything. He will ruffle your stillness and stagnancy. And you just need to go back to school. God bless Sister Emma. Where is she? She had to go back. Got a first class. Or whatever they call it, distinction. You, sometimes you've got to do something. I had to go back. Start from zero. I had to learn. What do the British like? 
How much, what, what paintings do they like? How do they do their thing? God provoked me with people. You know, some of us may make the mistake. And then we start doing what Saul did. God exposed David to him. Instead of say, seeing what God did with David and take David as his best man, as his captain, and win all the battles, he starts to envy. Thank God I didn't envy those people. What God has done for another person, he can do for you. Yeah. When you see God move in somebody's life, they got promotion, you can get it. Yeah. They got a wife, you can get it. Yeah. They got a husband, you can get one. Yeah. They got sanctified. You've been sitting on salvation for 10 years. San your salvation is getting stale. Yeah. I can tell you, you may not even have it. Mm -hmm. After all, these experiences must be living. Yeah. Listen, let, let's explain it deeper. The point we're trying to make is this. Every time you, you, you feel comfortable, you will hear another testimony of somebody who got saved. God will use to provoke you. Yeah. If you are not careful, you shut your heart down. Mm -hmm. God can use anybody. Look, God used those boys, all those boys to provoke me. I came back to this country. It's like I had a new head. Yeah. May you not get the wrong end of the stick. This is not the time to envy people. God will use people to inform you. This is what you did not know inspire you so that you will change in a dramatic way and then he will impart something into you that for the rest of your life you'll be running with it look one woman in the bible god knew inside her was a blessing the same god who knew inside her was a blessing he shot her womb <laughs> you see this god See, when I start talking about this, don't think I'm talking about those who need to give birth. If you are, if you are not fruitful spiritually, you are barren. Yeah. If you are not fruitful in your life, if your life is not a 360 thing, that things are happening. Because the first thing God told man is be fruitful and multiply. If things are not happening in your life that make you feel fulfilled about your life, this sermon is for you to shake you up. Amen. Provoke you. Some of you got potential talent and it's dying. The rest of the story I, did, I, I didn't tell you is this. When I came back, I had that exhibition. Whether it worked, it didn't work, that's not the issue. I was producing. I went back to school. Was able to understand. They gave me qualification. They gave me everything. Set me on a good path. From there, now, the most recent thing that happened, I was elected vice president of the Royal Institute of Oil Painters. This was a boy who was depressed and didn't know what he was doing. Because of this art... It opened the door for me to go on television and talk to people, be in the midst of people. Sometimes you will be in the midst of people and you wouldn't even know, why, why did God put me here to provoke you? You, come, you, you? you decided not to learn. You decided not to improve your life. You decided not to get your spirituality. God will put you, some, some of you went to Portland. You see how the youths are hungry for God. And she, she, she was there now. She came back from Portland and she said, ah, wow, I like the feeling there. Now, replicate it here. Amen. Replicate it here. Amen. You can make a difference. Don't stop complaining about the administration. Stop complaining about the conditions. Somebody in the same conditions as you, the same circumstances as you, they will take the same resources as you and make something out of it and you will still be complaining. You know what hurt Hannah? Hannah would have been okay, but Penina was giving babies. Every time. Babies. It would have been okay. Hannah would have been okay. Good woman she was, favored by her husband. It would have been fine. That's in First Samuel chapter 1, the first 18 verses. You can see her story there. I'm not going to go into it. Everything was fine for Hannah. But God knows the power of positive provocation. <laughs> Let's check that verse. So we, I don't say it without looking. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. No, let's start from 6. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 6. And her adversary also provoked her soul for her to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. The devil is a liar. Yeah. He's a liar. Amen. Your breakthrough is coming. Amen. Don't worry. He is provoking you so now. Don't worry. Yeah, it's not working out. He has something in mind. Penina didn't know she was in God's plan. They were provoking, provoking. God was converting negative provocation to positive provocation. Yeah. Hannah begins to feel uncomfortable. Look at seven. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Yeah. 
Therefore, she wept and did not eat. That's where God is going. Because God needs you to weep and not eat. Because God wants to make your life something, a precipice, a beautiful thing, which eyes will see and say, it is only God that can do this one. You just, you, you just try God's salvation, right? Just try God's salvation. Like, forget about those fake ones that you got. Don't try and tap into the real God and have the real thing and come here and confess your sins. You know what? You will be shocked at how something, someone so big that you can't see will be orchestrating your life and things will be happening that you did not apply for, that you did not work for, and it will be favor upon your life. Look at old lovely Hannah. She gets sick of it. And then her husband comes to her. Am I not more than ten sons to thee? Hannah looks at him. You don't know what's happening to me. Take me to the church. She goes to the church. She begins to pray these drunk prayers. Sorry, those of you that are conservatives, you don't move. Everything in the church, you just come. Quietly, you go. Everything quiet. The thing has not hit you yet. When he hits you, we went to Norway. One young lady prayed. My wife said she has never seen a Caucasian pray like that. <laughs> groanings. Heavy groanings because she has been provoked. And she wept so. Caucasian. You people say, ah, our own is too much. Caucasian. It doesn't matter. This thing cuts across everybody. When you want something, it's not fellowship prayers. Holy Father, God may save you. It won't work. This is a battle. Yeah. You know what happened to Hannah? Yeah. She began to pray the drunk prayers. My Lord, you have to take care of this thing. is killing me. I'm being provoked. Lord, I didn't, I didn't sign up. And God, you know what God is looking for? He's looking for you to, to, to make a, a covenant with him, an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Because he knows that's where he's going. Yeah. Conse- consecrate. Do something. He needs you. He, nobody knows about this. So they wonder why you are so, 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 because you know, you know the deal you made with God. So, so your own is different. When other people are doing things anyhow, you know the covenant you made with God. Don't joke with that covenant. Don't joke. Don't joke. It's so, it's so rich. It's so rich. It's what binds you to God. And Hannah said, you just give me a man child. Just give me a man child. You see, I will take him back to you. I just want this reproach out of my life. God heard, oh, the provocation was about to produce fruit. That thing that is not done in your life is waiting for a provocation. It's waiting for positive provocation. You're looking for that promotion, right? It's not been working out. You're settled. You think it's okay. And then another person will come to your work and get the higher one and start controlling you. And then you come to, you come to church depressed. You see, let, let, let's put it this way. When Hannah got to the bones of it, the man of God came and thought that she was drunk. She said, no, I am of a sorrowful spirit. My heart is broken. I need something. The man of God proclaimed her yes. blessing right there Amen. and then. Do you know the power of it? She had not even left the church when she decided to just countenance change. Yeah. Woke up, decided to eat, everything was happening. And that time, the next year, Samuel, her blessing arrived. And upon that, God gave her some other, you know what Yoruba call it? Jara. Just take that one. Top up, the British call it. He will give you your blessing. He will give you your top up blessing. But you cannot remain unchanged. You've got to do something. May God help you as you come to pray, yield your life. And I can tell you, this God of heaven has a way of changing your circumstances around spiritually, financially, emotionally, academically. All the allies in the world, they will be for your favor.
Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful word of life. Lord Jesus, the purpose for which you have sent this word, let our purpose be fulfilled in the life of every one of us, even as we go down on our knees to ask you that the provocation we are going through, the provocation that is coming, that you will bring something that we fulfill your purpose for our lives. Lord, we know the grace is available yes. even as we look up to you. Yes. Do this for us, O oh Lord, yes. so that from today, from now on, yes. a different perspective, yes. a different understanding, yes. a yielding totally to you, yes. so that in the end, yes. we will be that person, that pastor, yes. that minister, yes. that choir member, yes. that church member, yes that worker that you meant us to be. Do this for us and much more as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.